Dave Franco, you played the dearly departed pop icon Xavier on the after party. Um, and you've said that you got to play eight shades of douche on this show. So how would you rank the shades from douchiest to least douchiest? Oh, wow. This is the first time I've gotten this question. Um, I would say the douchiest is probably in Ike's episode, kind of the action episode where I'm like aggro douche. Um, next on the list is maybe the uh, Alana Glazer's episode um, where I'm kind of tail between his legs douche. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go to Sam Richardson's episode uh, where I'm kind of like kill him with kindness, douche. <laughs> and, um, I, should, then, I should be running these down to keep track. <laughs> so you have three so far. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe, my, maybe my favorite was the flashback episode where I am vulnerable, insecure douche, uh, where I get this, the show like, it's, it's almost like the... Um, the biggest outlier of all the the douchey characters or douchey um colors that I show in the yeah yeah <laughs> I love it I I love that uh the high school episode because it's really your origin story Xavier's origin yeah because he was Eugene and then he dies his hair chardonnay yes and yeah you uh <laughs> you get to see the character as uh Eugene Duckworth um and you get to you know you get to just see why why he is the way he is in these later episodes um where in high school he just desperately wanted to be cool and to be accepted but his desperation ended up pushing everyone further away um and even though i don't condone any of the characters actions um, I think it's nice for the audience to at least like see that there's a human inside there and to at least understand why he's um, committing some of these horrible acts. Mm -hmm. I think that's also like a familiar thread that a lot of people can relate to. Like in high school, you want to be popular and like in his case, like no one liked him. Mm -hmm. um, and now as an adult, he's famous and people want a piece of him. Yeah, and I think um, the f because of where he came from, the fame really went to his head and he almost overcompensated and started lording his new power over everyone to almost make up for the times when they all treated him like shit. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite part of that episode, besides your Aeropostal jacket. <laughs> so they, they they cut out a, a an improvised line where I was I, I I went on a run about the jacket itself and was pronouncing it Aero Postale, which I think is how I did pronounce it in high school. <laughs> that's that's just a French version. That's like in Friends when a Phoebe pronounced Nestle Tollhouse Nestle Tollhouse. Exactly. Okay. Very fancy. Yeah. Um, they need to release that uh, deleted scene. But um, I love I love the fight at the end with you and Sam Richardson. Mm -hmm. And he said it was like completely improvised. So how many takes of that did you guys do? We did. We did a handful of takes. And as um, as it went along, it uh, the fight became more and more ridiculous. And uh, I think the intention going into it was, let's create the lamest fight scene ever captured on film. And I think we got pretty close, <laughs> where it's just two dorks trying to pre pretend like they know what they're doing, but ultimately it's just a, a little bit of a slap fight. And, um, and it was probably the first fight either of them have been in, and, it's, and that is very apparent. It's true. And then you, you both do the sound of music move. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was, again, like you said, the whole thing was improvised. And so I remember Sam just started spinning in a circle and I decided um, I should start spinning in a circle and accuse him of stealing my move. That was my, my move that I do all the time. And now he was trying to claim it as his own. <laughs> it's, it's really inspired because it's like, we need to see more of that then like was he doing that in like scope diem like was was that like his exactly. <laughs> i imagine he was yeah at least in his own head he was 
yeah um that there's also a very heartbreaking scene when Jasper breaks up with you mm -hmm. Scott Bay Diem no more um pop is just a fat skies forever <laughs> yeah um but again like you really understand like where like Xavier's like uh adult attitude comes from in that and um and and you know after the finale maybe you look at like their friendship and uh their relationship and the as bandmates like differently so uh, did you and uh, Ben Schwartz like talk about any of that I guess it also depends on like when you found out that spoiler alert Jasper was the killer yeah I, I mean Ben and I like to believe that Jasper and Xavier have the the real um the real romance uh throughout this series where uh it, it is a platonic love story but it's very intense and um, I, you know, my character in high school, I was all in on this band with him and I felt very betrayed when he, he backed out. And then in the later episodes, when he tries to, um, get me to bless his track and to try to pretend like none of that happened in the past, it just felt like a huge slight to my character where it was like, where were you when I needed you? And now you're just trying to use me for my fame. And so, um, again, yeah, it's a very deep, complicated relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And like, you understand, like, I think like the motive makes sense and everything. Like, I don't think like, you know, the reveal that he's the killer is like, a, like a weird, like heel turn for that either. So exactly. I think that's, what's great about the show is that, um, the killer wasn't just someone who was walking in the deep background of one scene. You know, it's it's one of the main characters and and yes, you understand his motivations and and how this character could turn dark enough to actually commit murder. Um, and it was it was uh, it was intense filming the the murder scene because uh, we, we filmed it towards the end of the shoot. And at that point we had all kind of fallen in love with these characters and with each other. And it was heartbreaking to, to see one of these characters doing this to another one. And um, I don't know, Ben and I had a lot of fun kind of um, jumping back and forth between the um, comedy and then some of these more serious moments as well. Mm -hmm. yeah it was very sad because I was like I I just want the show to continue I don't want any of them to be the killer and for it to be over I know exactly um but so at what point like during the shoot did you find out uh, who the killer was I think we all knew um before we started filming we we all received every script and so that wasn't a surprise to any of us um so yeah yeah it wasn't it, it wasn't a big thing like oh my god it was you this whole time, uh, which would have been a whole different thing, but ultimately probably best for all of our character arcs to know ahead yeah, of Yeah, for sure. But in, in that sense, is it maybe um, easier or less complicated to play the victim? Because may, uh, if, if you're one of the suspects, you don't really have to uh, be concerned with, am I giving too much away, whether or not I'm like the killer or not? I mean, for me, no one suspected that I was the killer because I was the one who got killed. Uh, <laughs> and this might, I might just be going on a tangent because I don't know how to answer that question, but um, it was really fun for me because, you know, in everyone's episode, you have to understand why each of them hates my character because we need to suspect everyone. Right. And so because of that, I got to have these really kind of juicy interactions with everyone where I got to just be like a huge douche or asshole and, and you get to understand again why they dislike me. And so it just, it was really, these really kind of fun, um, crazy scenes. And so I, I felt very fortunate to kind of be able to act with everyone in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk about Xavier's adult look because I love the all purple suit like no shirt um was that like something like chris miller had always planned because i know he's been like very meticulous about detail and everything or is that something you guys just kind of came up with during like fittings so when when chris first approached me about this character i was i was really flattered and i was so excited to work with him again but i was a little bit nervous because it was 
like a quote unquote, like more extreme character. Um, and I was just trying to figure out how I was going to play it without making it too much of a cartoon. And when we landed on the bleached tips and the purple flowery suit with no shirt underneath, the character really locked into my, into my mind where I was like, oh, th the aesthetics of this character is doing a lot of the heavy lifting that I don't need to put on too much. Like it's all there. If I just like say these lines, these ridiculous lines in a very earnest way, then that will be plenty. Um, and so, yes, all those conversations happened very early on. Uh, and I'm glad they did because it, it made me much more just comfortable with what I was going into and, and kind of knowing how, how I was going to play this guy. Mm -hmm. um, do you think Timothy Chalamet stole Xavier's look at the Oscars? Because it's a great Jack question. No shirt? It's not for me to say, but you brought it up. You tell me what you I'm just, I'm just saying, like, Xavier's a trendsetter <laughs> here. So, or maybe that was his tribute to Xavier since he passed away. So. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Uh, you said it, and I'm just going <laughs> to agree with you. <laughs> um, I know you you studied some uh, unnamed pop stars uh, to, to become a pop star. So what did you learn from like, perusing music videos or TikToks or whatnot? <laughs> Uh, there were just certain mannerisms that I took from from different people who I won't name. And then, like I was saying earlier, I think I think what I how I personally excel in in comedies is instead of being the guy who's throwing out like a million jokes, like if you put me in an extreme bizarre scenario, I will play it as straight and as real and as earnest as possible and almost let the humor just come from the situation itself and just how hard I'm committing to that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. No, yeah, that's for sure. I, Cause I mean, you still want Xavier to be like his own thing, even if you look to other from inspiration it's like sure. it's a show and it's a comedy so sure, you know, sure. the lines are already there but um you also recorded music for the first time and mm -hmm. Xavier released a posthumous EP so what yes. was that like uh it was really fun um again going back to the first time I talked to Chris Miller about this role he was saying that the character is this famous pop star and we want to have we want to there to be songs surrounding this guy and he was like don't worry you don't have to sing we'll bring in someone else as your singing voice and I was like whoa 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 I've never sang professionally before but I feel like we should at least give it a shot and it was really liberating for me because no one had any expectations of me and so and and because singing was something that was so far outside of my elements I felt like I could just let go and and just take huge swings. And w the worst case scenario was that I did not sound great. And in that case, they could bring in someone else and, and you know, replace my singing voice. But uh, I think um, with, with auto-tune and with all of the music producers and writers that they surrounded me with, it... it um, it created a situation where I, I felt like I couldn't fail. Like I just was surrounded by the best team. And we had such a great time that we were initially supposed to just record one song and it turned into an entire EP and we uh, filmed two music videos uh, uh, where I was doing choreographed dance moves as well, which is not something I've ever done professionally. And um, my backup dancers, were like literally Justin Bieber's dancers and some of some of the some of the older dancers had had worked with Michael Jackson Jackson in the past and somehow they got saddled with being Xavier's backup dancers which um it's I, level, I, yeah yeah <laughs> I, I apologize to all of them at the beginning of the day um just for for their lives leading to to that moment but um it was it was so much fun yeah, the I'm a Live Forever video is great, top notch it's, stuff there, especially uh, the, the postscript of like, unfortunately, he died after the filming of this video. Well, what was interesting is I remember when the video first came out and um, some people didn't recognize me as this character and they thought 
that this artist had put out this video about how he was never going to die. And then at the end of the video, they were like, oh, this guy died. And everyone was like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> this, is, this is so dark and ironic. And I don't know how to feel about it. But I think that was the greatest compliment I could have received is yeah. people actually believing this was a real pop star. And then, then it's like, you guys got to watch the after party. There you go. See, it, it's perfect promo. Um, so, yeah, R.I.P. Xavier is out. But when are we going to get the Scott A. Diem album? <sighs> This is a great question. Um, there's been no further talk about that, but uh, if you yell loud enough, we can at least start the conversation. But what I am hoping for is the full Hall & Oates biopic. Yes, please, uh, um, yeah. We had so much fun shooting that tiny clip where um, that scene on the page was probably three lines back and forth. And we ended up shooting it for about four hours uh we just couldn't stop improvising about um you know which member of hall and oats deserves to have the mustache and uh anyway this is something that i would be very excited about doing if that could ever come into existence um why can't we see that footage right now where is it i don't know i'm the wrong person to ask but again keep screaming loud enough and maybe something will appear <laughs> Yeah, I think we need the, the private eyes uh, real biopic, and we go. also need Hungry Hungry Hippos. There you go. Uh, the Hungry Hungry Hippos movie might be a little bit harder for me because uh, I ended up choosing an accent for that character that I couldn't even tell you what it is, but it actually hurt for me to physically do it and so imagining doing a feature length version of that does not excite me quite as much as doing the Hall & Oates biopic. <laughs> so why, why, why did you stick with it then if it hurt you or did you think like this will be brief it's okay. Because it was such yeah. a brief thing and I figured uh, if Xavier was cast in the Hungry Hungry Hippos movie he was going to take a big swing and he really did. <laughs> um, that's fine if, if because uh, a lot of uh, there, there have been actors in the past who phased out accents Mm. And, and you know throughout even shows or films or like oh 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 I hear you where like you know? at the so I think it's okay movie, yeah at the beginning of the movie they have a really thick accent and then yeah by the end, maybe he's trying to like right. acclimate and lose the accent so it's, it's okay I think that would work I think that would work too let's do it all right we're doing the hungry hungry hippos movie. <laughs> <laughs> um so season two uh you are unfortunately not in a whole new uh death murder at a after party of a wedding but could you just could they just like bring you back in some like more Xavier footage in some way, like another music video or more footage from Private Eyes or Hunger Hungry Hippos? They could, they could. Uh, I don't know if they will. They don't know if I will. I think it's all still a big mystery to everyone, but I'm here for it. I love, I love playing this character. I love uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. So if they want me to walk in the background, if they want me to be an extra for one scene, I'm there. Mm -hmm. What what do you think of what what do you think of the cast so far for season two? It's like loaded, and and Sam and Zoe are back, obviously. Uh, from what I've seen, yeah, I mean it's it's incredible. Uh, again, with uh, Phil and Chris's track record, they they have not made anything that is not incredible, and so they essentially can get anyone they want, and that is very apparent in in this new cast. Mm -hmm. Um, and lastly, uh, I got to ask you, because I've already asked Sam and Ben, can you spell diarrhea? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Uh, D-I-A-R, D-I-R, R, so two R's, H-E-A. That's my you did it. Really? Yeah, they couldn't do it. You're the first one. Gold star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very shocked. This is why you had to die because you could spell diarrhea. <laughs> there, yeah, I shouldn't be proud of myself for that, but I kind of am. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, I can't think of a better note to end on. So Dave, thank you so much for your time. It was great speaking with you and have a great day. Absolutely. Thank you for the, uh, the insightful questions. There